fait hyper peur. Là, il y a 42. Il y a des vagues de malades. Tout à l'heure, j'ai fait un vol plané euh, d'ici. Là, j'étais dans la descente et je suis tombée juste là parce que je sais pas comment j'ai fait pour pas me faire mal. C'est hyper violent. Et là, dehors, je fais plus dehors parce que c'est trop dangereux. Petit coup de vent à l'Atlantique Nord, c'est solide. Dans la machine à laver. Il y a du vent là. 29 nœuds, 30 nœuds. Plus peine à tenir debout dans le bateau là. On s'imagine que sur les folders, ils doivent même pas réussir à se lever. J'ai commencé la voile, on mettait des chapeaux à l'époque. Aujourd'hui, on met des casques. Et cette préserver le bateau, il y a une journée complète à. Bah, I have to force myself to eat something. I might spill it all over the place. Hi, my name is Conrad Coleman. I'm an Amoka sailor and I'm currently in the Amoka office. I will be leaving next week uh, to sail across the Atlantic to finally catch up with my friends who are currently doing the transat season. Ah, we're in 35 degrees, it's fuming a little bit. It's a little bit in a sea that's not very well arranged. We're in 3-4 hours like that. And it's going to be a little bit calmed down. It's going to be a little bit calmed down. Ah, des belles conditions quand même. Voilà, et voilà. Hello, donc là on est mercredi et euh, ça y est, j'ai passé le plus dur. J'ai passé ce, ce front méga costaud qu'on a eu cette nuit. Je pense qu'au max en rafale, j'ai eu 48 nœuds. Euh, ça a tapé hyper fort cette nuit. Ça, ça tapait tellement, même dans mon pouce, que ça me faisait mal à la tête à chaque fois. À chaque fois que ça a résonné, ça faisait une onde de choc dans le bateau. Looks like the last 48 hours of the race have been absolutely brutal. If you've been looking at the videos that have been going on to YouTube, you will see from one boat to the next to the next, really tired faces, lots of videos with the boats bouncing up and down. Everybody complained about the fact that they can't sleep, they can't eat, and what they're trying to look after is themselves and the boat. For most of them, all questions about the race themselves are taking a second place uh, and security is the name of the game here. Allez, aujourd'hui, c'est le premier repas prêt depuis le départ. Je me suis dit, ouais, je vais attendre euh, qu'il fasse meilleur. Et puis en fait, euh, bah, si c'est ça, je mangerai à New York, quoi. C'est la merde. C'est pas très chaud et il y a eu pas mal d'avaries sur la flotte. J'ai appris que Nico avait cassé son bout dehors. Je suis un peu forcément déçu pour lui. We're approaching halfway. Um, Clarice Cremer has, um, has had a significant problem with the structure of her boat, so that demonstrates that the conditions have been really, really, really hard. Her boat, L'Occitane, is the old Apivia, which of course um, did the last Vendée Globe and several other transatlantics. This is a proven boat, and yet it is here in the Transat CEC that it is broken. So this is a testament just to how strong these conditions are. That's <laughs> what J'ai une cloison qui a explosé. La deuxième cloison en partant de l'avant, on est complètement fissuré de part et d'autre. Donc ça a vraiment pas une bonne gueule quoi, mon bateau il est tout mou. J'espère que vous entendez les sons. Les vagues, le sifflement de du vent et les foils. Regardez ce ciel incroyable. Il n'y a que en mer qu'on voit ça. Il fait toujours
si je crois ici. Et euh, on est prêt pour, euh, pour prendre des G, euh, pour prendre des G tels des astronautes parce que ça va vraiment bombarder aujourd'hui. Euh, là je suis calé dans le siège parce que ça envoie quand même pas mal. On va essayer d'aller contourner euh, petite dépression, euh, on va jouer avec. On voit sur la vidéo là que j'ai euh, beaucoup choqué la voile d'avant pour éviter au bateau de, de planter trop fort. Ça bouge beaucoup, j'ai mis le casse de rugby parce que tout à l'heure sur un planté, euh, j'ai un peu volé. C'est pas facile euh, à gérer celle-là, là, cette petite tep. On va voir. Ça bouge. passe. As they keep ripping into the top of this depression, well, if you look into the data on, on some of the other boats, they've been going surprisingly slowly, with the exception of Tongi Letoke, who, uh, who is the leading uh, daggerboard boat, and he's maintaining pretty high average speeds. On va sortir de cette petite tempête et, euh, et on va attaquer le portant. On a une météo assez exceptionnelle euh, pour les 3-4 prochains jours. Là. Alors, il fait super froid. Et euh, et c'est assez, assez stylé, j'aime bien, bien ce moment-là. C'est sauvage What's to come Well, kind of more of the same. This light blue zone here uh, is what's called an ice exclusion zone. So of course, ice means cold, and northerly winds coming right off the Arctic means it's going to be freezing cold. And so right now, the boats are in this zone here, uh, at the top of this depression. And so that's going to allow the fleet to roll over the top of it. And still with these north and um, northerly winds, the, the sea state is going to be pretty clean because they've had wind from the north for several days. So actually, it should be pretty good going. The tricky thing comes on Monday. The blue zone is a ridge of high pressure. The boats are trying to get uh, down to New York here. So they're going to have to cross this zone eventually. And so that's a big blue wall. The weather will, will shut down. The sea state will be bad and they won't have enough pressure in their sails uh, to keep the boats fully powered up and moving through. And so these kind of transitions are hard to manage, uh, both because the, the sea state left over from the old system. And then also it's hard psychologically because uh, you can see that there are just a few miles separating the boats. Uh, indeed, Massif and Charlie Danin was looking over his shoulder and literally seeing on the water um, Johan Richom uh, before Johan passed him. Bon, ce matin, j'ai tranquillement euh, sur Massif, sans rien demander à personne, en train de faire ma fondée de CIC. Et là, qui je vois arriver dans mon tableau arrière Un certain Johan Richom. Et ouais. The storyline from the front of the race is really, really interesting. The battle that we've seen on the water between Charlie Dalin and Johan Richon, well, I think we won't get the real truth until the, the interviews at the finish line. But what we've seen speaks to a couple, of, uh, a couple of things that have been in play for the last few years. First is, uh, they both have new boats, fully equipped teams, the, the biggest, most competitive, highest budget teams that we see in the race. However, their boats, while new, are very different. The Verdier design for a PVM is made more for moderate conditions and the boat is quite, quite different, a lot flatter, uh, whereas Johan's boat is an Antoine Coq, uh, uh, Fino design, and the boat has a lot more rocker and is really uh, designed for those super, super strong conditions, which is what they've been experiencing. And so it's kind of like racing uh, maybe a, a rally car, uh, you know, still quite robust, uh, optimized for slightly smoother roads um, and against a, a monster truck, which is kind of the boat that Johan has. And so it's possible that, that the balance of, of power could, uh, could swap back because I just said that we have a transition zone coming up. There's some light winds to come, upwind, uh, which is particularly good for Charlie's boat. All we can do is guess and watch and see if Charlie is able to fight back. I USA, I want for you. Le vent monte, ça va vite. Hello! On jusqu'à 21, 22. Oh,
C'est pas grave, c'est changement de point aujourd'hui. Allez, go, go, go